Ottawa is blasting the U.S. over its decision to keep applying anti-dumping and countervailing duties against Canadian softwood lumber, albeit at a much lower level than they have in the past. But the upcoming new duty rate for most Canadian lumber producers is going to be about 8.59% compared with the current 17.9%. Joining me now is Susan Yurkovich. She's president of the BC Lumber Trade Council. Welcome, Susan. I guess first Good of all, morning. let's get some background. How much <laughs> does softwood lumber, how much softwood with lumber does BC export to the US? Well, we're a little under 50% of the industry, so it, it's a lot. It's a very big product uh, for the province of British Columbia. A lot of people work in our sector. There's about 100,000 jobs that are supported by the forest sector here in British Columbia. So softwood lumber is a, is a really big deal in, in British Columbia, as it is across Canada. It supports a lot of jobs in a lot of communities across our country. Now, we are seeing those rates coming down. Will that difference um, make much of a difference to Canadian softwood lumber producers? Well, I mean, of course, any uh, decline in the duty rate is welcome by the industry. Um, what's unfortunate is we shouldn't be paying duties at all. We should have free trade in lumber, uh, particularly given that the U.S. Uh, US consumers demand for our lumber is very high um, and the u.s industry is not able to meet its own domestic uh domestic demand the we, that's why we've always had a north american market for lumber so you know yes we're we're happy to be paying lower duties the all other rates being now uh about eight and a half percent or eight point five nine percent but still it should be zero and you know until that uh until that becomes the case we've got lots of money that continues to go on deposits sitting on the sidelines of, of the industry and not being invested in plant and equipment and, and workers across our country and, in, and indeed uh, in the industry in North America. Fair enough. And I mean, when we think about it in terms of context for people who aren't in the lumber industry, what does 8.59% really mean to a lot of these producers in terms of costs? Well, look, it's not really what it means for uh, for the producers. Obviously, the, the tough part for producers is they're they're taking cash deposits and and effectively putting it on ice. But those tariffs get priced into our lumber. Um, and that's, you know, it's a commodity uh, product. So those prices go up for everyone. So at a time when, you know, we're all talking about inflation and, and really focused on affordability, when you add another 8% on uh, uh, for every thousand, eight and a half percent uh per 1,000 board feet going into the U.S., uh, those are those costs are being passed along to consumers. And then on this side, you've got companies that have very large deposits, money that's not in play. It's not being invested in, in as, as I said, in plant or equipment or workers or, or new investments. And that's particularly troubling, you know, when we're, you know, we look at the demand for wood products and products made from forest fiber is growing and it's growing because people are thinking about climate and carbon. And, you know, wood is really the, the perfect building material if you, if you want to focus on uh, climate change and, and more and more people are looking to do that. And so at a time when we've got strong demand, we have this penalty or this punishing tariff put on our lumber products that are, that are traveling into the U.S. And, um, you know, eventually this has got to come to an end. That's really interesting that you're talking about how more environmentally friendly it is. I mean, and especially when we consider how high inflation is for many consumers mm -hmm. right now. Is this, do you think, causing many to turn away from lumber and move to, towards products that maybe aren't as environmentally friendly? You know, that's a really good uh, question. I don't know the answer to that. I don't have statistics on that. But I would suspect that as, you know, certainly as products get more expensive, people look at alternatives. So they, they look more to steel and concrete, which is not the best choice for the planet. Look, if you're building with wood, uh, you're storing carbon for, for as long as that product is in its useful life. And so it's really important as we're all looking to find ways to re reduce carbon emissions. And so we just find it really troubling um, that we continue to face this, you know, this hurdle, uh, moving our products into the marketplace. What we would prefer to be doing, the Canadian industry, which would much, much rather be working with our industry partners in the U.S., looking to grow demand for wood and to talk about the importance important considerations that builders and people who are looking for all kinds, it's not just homes that are built with uh, wood, but there's also lots of products that are made from forest fiber 
that are also a better choice. If you're using forest fiber, it's a better choice for the planet if you're doing so. And so we think we should be spending time focusing on growing the pie and not um, fighting these tariff wars, which of course we've been doing for now decades. What do you see as a fair rate? The fair rate is zero. We should have free trade. You know, we have a free trade agreement, uh, NAFTA, now Kuzma, uh, in place, and we should have free trade in lumber. And that's really important because, you know, the U.S. industry has put on a lot of new supply in recent years, um, but they still are about 14 billion board sh feet short of meeting their own consumers' demand in the U.S. So that's why the Canadian players are really important in servicing that market. And that's why we've always had a North American uh, market for lumber. So, you know, we should have free trade in lumber. Um, we don't have it yet. And we continue to fight these, these legal ba battles, which of course are extremely time consuming, costly. Um, they take up a lot of resources and time and energy that could be better spent, as I said, doing other things that are more productive. Definitely. And I guess this is an issue that's been around for I, how many years now at this point? Why, cannot, why can't Ottawa seem to make any... 45, okay. Why yeah, can't Ottawa so. make any headway in this fight? Well, you know, it's really tough. Um, I know uh, it's, it's a very difficult file and it's transcended uh, liberal and conservative governments on this side of the border. It's also transcended... Democratic and Republican uh, um, administrations on the other side of the border. The fact of the matter is, is that it's really not something that the Canada can solve without having the U.S. at the table. And the situation is not exactly the same on both sides of the border. If the government of Canada reached an agreement with the U.S., they have the power to bind the Canadian industry. That's not the case in the United States. So while you know, while they, the industry in the U.S. doesn't have a veto per se, they have an effective veto. And so that's why it's very difficult to get resolution to this. We have to get the U.S. industry or the government in the U.S. to compel industry to get to the table to find a durable solution to this problem. Do you find that support for duties from the U.S. lumber industry goes up when lumber prices are low? Is there any kind of mm -hmm. correlation there? You know, well, I mean, there has been, it has been, you know, initially uh, in past when we've been looking at deals, there's been more punishing tariffs when we're at the bottom of the market or when prices are low. It's supposed to disincent Canadian producers uh, to sending a product over the border when prices are very low. We're not in that situation right now. What you've seen is with the pandemic, an extremely volatile, the most volatility ever in the lumber markets we've seen over the last couple of years. Of course, you know, from lows of, you know, under $400 to up over $1,600 per thousand board feet. So we've had extreme volatility. Prices are not at the peak. Um, they're, they're certainly back down, but they're not anywhere near the bottom uh, where we have been before in previous, uh, you know, in previous cycles of the industry. And that's because, you know, we still have really good demand fundamentals, uh, particularly housing and the repair and remodeling sector, which, of course, has actually surpassed housing starts as the indicator of lumber demand. You know, we've had very strong numbers on uh, the R&R sector as, you know, people particularly, it, and it just drew up, uh, drove up sharply uh, during the pandemic when people got locked down and started, you know, building decks and refinishing their basements. Yeah. Um, so that sector remains strong. But we also have good de demand fundamentals in the housing market. And now it's it's tempered a bit because, you know, we have, we're seeing inflationary pressures. But the demand fundamentals for housing in the U.S. also are strong.